So the king of Yemen, he was referred to as Tubba. He was traveling to conquer the world. He set off with his army trying, uh, traveling to conquer the world. He passed by Medina Munawwara. When he passed by this Medina Munawwara, he left his son behind him. He left his son behind, he carried on fighting and conquering. When he was returning back to Yemen, on his way back, he stopped by Medina Munawwara to pick up his son again. When he stopped by there, he found that his son had been killed. And his son is killed, he asked the people, who killed my son? I'm the conqueror, who dared to touch my son? They couldn't find the culprit. So now this king Tubba, he decided to wage war against his people. The people of Medina Munawwara. Now the people that were living there, they were commonly the Jews, that had settled in Medina Munawwara. So these two gathered together the Jews and the, and the forefathers of the Ansar, and they began to fight against this Tubba. They're fighting in the day, and Tubba realizes that these people are very unique. Their heart is so soft that there's something that's gonna come to these people that, that, that he can't even imagine. What he sees is that these people are fighting him in the battlefield in the day, and at night time they bring beds for them to sleep on. At night time these people of Medina Munawwara are serving their enemies with food. At night time they are treating them as their guest. And the day they come to the battlefield they fight, at night they treat them as their guest. So he says to the people, what is this? What are you, what are you guys following? So two Jewish rabbis, they, they come to this um, Tubba and they say to him that we follow the religion of Musa alayhi salam. And at the time, the religion of Musa alayhi salam, the religion of Isa alayhi salam was the correct religion. So they began to preach him the basics of their religion. When he heard this religion, when he saw their moral, he accepted um, the religion of Musa alayhi salam, Judaism. He accepted. Now after accepting the religion of Musa alayhi salam, he told the people of Medina that give me two of your great scholars and allow them to return with me to um, Yemen. So they granted permission, he took these two scholars with him and he came to Yemen. When he returned back to his people, the people they rejected, they refused to let him inside. They said, we're not going to allow you to come inside Yemen. How could you give up on the religion of our forefathers? They were idol worshippers. So he said to the people that whenever we have a dispute in our country, as we've seen in the past, we always, they, they were idol worshippers, they used to worship the fire too. So he said, let's involve the fire and let's let the fire decide for us. So they agreed. So now what happened was the idol worshippers, they came to the field, to the plain with their, um, with their idols. And on the other hand came these two Jewish rabbis with their book, the Torah. Now when they came, the fire was opened, they had a room with the fire, they opened the fire, the fire began to rush towards him. Now when the fire began to rush towards him, it comes in the narrations, Ibn Kathir he narrates, that the people that were holding the idols, they began to run away. They were frightened, they were scared, they began to run away. But the people with the Torah, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they began to walk towards the fire. And when they began to walk towards the fire, the fire pushed back just as it came out of that, as, just as it came out of that room. So now when the people saw this, they realized that the fire favored them. Therefore, they all the country, the entire country accepted Judaism. Now, after accepting the religion of Musa alayhi salam, this, this, this Tubba, this king, he came back to Medina Munawwara. He told the people, describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam to you. Look into your books, study your books, and describe this person to you. There is a mention in your book of this one Prophet that will come before the end of time, describe him before me. So they begin to describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Torah and Injil, as the Quran says that the, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was described in the Torah and in the Injil. When Isa alayhi salam when he came, what was the mission of Isa alayhi salam? Isa alayhi salam came with two missions. First of all, was to confirm that which came before him, and the second was to inform that is to come. Allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned in Surah Saf that when Isa alayhi salam came, he said to the people that I confirmed that which came before me in, from the Torah that was given to Musa alayhi salam, wa mubashiram bi rasooli yati min ba'di ismu Ahmad, and I give you glad tidings, I inform you of a prophet that will come, whose name will be Ahmad. Whose name will be Ahmad. Ahmad in the skies and the earth known as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said to these people, describe this person before me. So they began to describe the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their books. Now this king, this Tubba, he fell so deeply in love with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he built a house for the Prophet ﷺ. And then what he did was, he built this beautiful house and he told the people that this house is for Muhammad ﷺ if he is born during my life. And then he, he invested a lot of his wealth in that house and he began to, and he, he left his country, he came to live in Medina Munawwara. And what happened was while he was in Medina Munawwara, he realized that his life was coming to an end, he was passing away. So, and he realized that he wouldn't be, he, would, he wasn't going to be given the chance to see the Prophet <laughs> So he wrote a piece of poetry on a piece of paper. And he passed his poetry out to the people of Medina Munawwara. He told them, safeguard this, these lines that I'm writing, and if any one of you sees the Prophet ﷺ, pass these on to the Prophet ﷺ.
And these lines of poetry were very common within the people of Ansar. What he said was that he said, Shahidtu ala Ahmad annahu Rasulullah bari'un nasan. That I testify that Muhammad I, I testify that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. First thing. And then he says, فَلَوْ مُدَّ عُمْرِي إِلَىٰ عُمْرِهِ لَكُنْتُ وَزِيرًا لَهُ وَابْنُ عَمِّي That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants me a life that prolongs that I see this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I will be his chief, I will be his cousin. I will be right next to him. And then he carries on to say, وَجَاهَدْتُ بِالسَّيْفِ أَعْدَاءَهُ وَفَرَّجْتُ عِنْدَهُ كُلَّ هَمِّي That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me this long life, first of all, I will testify in him. Second of all, I will be his chief. Third of all, I will be with him everywhere he goes. And if any enemy comes to come, comes to fight against him, I will fight against this person and I will save the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the from the harm of any person that will come to attack the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when he says this, he writes this letter. He buries it under that house, and he says that if the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes, pass this letter on to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It comes in narration that when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam arrived in Medina Munawwara, from the children of Tubba was a was a was a person who was to be a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who accepted Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he arrived in Medina Munawwara, he said to the people that wherever my camel stops, this is where I will stay. The camel they walked through the streets of Medina Munawwara and stopped at the house of Abu Ayyub al Ansari, radiyallahu taala. Abu Ayyub al Ansari, radiyallahu taala, was from the descendants of the Stubba, and he passed on these verses of poetry to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In Ibn Abi Dunya, he narrates in Kitab al Qubur that two graves were dug out in Sanaa. And when these two, day, two graves were dug out, they were, the, they were the graves of two women. And on, in their grave, they had uh, uh, a slate, a, uh, a silver slate. And on this silver slate were engraved these very same lines of poetry. That the Qawm of Tubba, the king of Tubba, that he, that, he, that he said for the Prophet ﷺ. And these two women, along on the, on, the, on, the, on the slate, it also said that they were the daughters of this king, Qawm of Tubba. This king of the, of the people of Tubba, his two daughters, they were buried there. And in their grave, they also took with them the slate, that, um, with a, a silver slate that had um, engraved on them the poetry that their father had recited for the Prophet ﷺ. So this was a person who came before the Prophet ﷺ, and he was so deeply in love with the Prophet ﷺ. Even though the Prophet ﷺ is to be born where? In Makkah Mukarramah. There is no sign, no idea that the Prophet ﷺ will ever arrive in Medina Munawwara at that time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed it into His books. And these books, they were, they were true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed the truth in His books. And this message was passed on to the king of Tubba, and he built a house there for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which remained there. Then they brought, it fell into rubble, and then after um, Abu Yubh al Ansari, he brought the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stayed in his house, exactly where this king Tubba, where he had set the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.